Well, welcome everybody. I'm Julia Martin from the Australian Research Data Commons. And thank you for joining today's webinar where Dr. Adrian Burton and Shada Havadi will present an overview of the Public Sector to Research Sector Bridges Program. It's also an opportunity for you to ask questions. I'd like to acknowledge the Ngunnawal people who are the traditional custodians of Canberra country where I am today. And I pay respect to the elders of the Ngunnawal nation, both past and present. I also extend this respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in attendance today. Just a bit of housekeeping, during the webinar you will be muted and note that the webinar is being recorded. And as mentioned, there will be time for questions after the presentation. So please add your questions into the pod as they arise. Now I'll hand over to Adrian and Shada. Hi everyone. Uh, I'll just go over the, a couple of the uh, background slides and then we'll head, hand over to Shada Hadawi, who's the program manager for this program. The, uh, this program comes to you through the ARDC, the Australian Research uh, Data Commons. Uh, we have uh, a wide range of things that uh, are offered as both service and infrastructure and partnerships. Uh, everything from policy and governance and uh, through to software development and platforms. We have storage and compute infrastructure as well as uh, services, information services and uh, data programs. This particular program is one of our data programs and um, the general context for the ARDC is NCRIS, which is a government program, um, the National Collaborative Research Infrastructure Strategy and uh, ARDC is one of the programs within NCRIS. This particular program, the Public Sector to Research Sector Bridges Program is a partnership program from our point of view. We're co-investing in building these uh, bridges between the public sector and the research sector. Uh, we have a number of uh, programs of co-investment programs in this area and that's the, that in the whole initiative is called the ARDC National Data Assets Initiative. I recommend if you're interested in this that you, you have a look on our website at the National Data Assets Initiative. That will give you the, the full um, context for this program. What we're trying to do in this particular program is um, just really create that nice uh, bridge between the and collaboration between the public sector and research sector. Um, the public sector data is an absolutely critical input into research and uh, this program is trying to improve uh, that uh, the access arrangements and the uh, particular interfaces for the research sector. Um, we do have a special process in this program which we don't have in our other programs which is a kind of matchmaking and brokering process uh, where not all public sector organisations will be aware of all the different research organisations that might be interested in their data and vice versa. Some research sector people may not know the exact uh, contacts in the public sector for the data that they're trying to work with. So there is a special kind of brokering process as part of our expression of interest. I said to you that the, the context for this program is the national data assets. These are six different programs. Uh, this particular one is really focused in on uh, the public sector, research sector interface, but uh, there are other programs with uh, different focus. The idea of uh, creating national data assets comes from uh, the NCRIS program. The, the spirit of NCRIS really is uh, to create nationally significant assets or facilities and services that support leading edge research. Uh, the basis of the uh, NCRIS and uh, of the ARDC is this policy document, the National Research Infrastructure Roadmap, um, that uh, uh, kind of governs uh, what we do. Data is considered as national research infrastructure. Uh, some of those infrastructure programs are to do with instruments or facilities, 
But data itself is uh, one, of the, one of the components of national research infrastructure. Uh, and we know that data availability and data sharing is part of the government, you know, Australian governments, uh, plural, um, policy settings that uh, data uh, as a data sharing as a, as a component of uh, government infrastructure it has been underlined by the uh, Productivity Commission and by Prime Minister and Cabinet in a number of uh, Australian government in initiatives and similar initiatives at the different states. So in one sense, we are assuming that uh, the different research, uh, the different uh, public sector organisations have some kind of an underpinning um, capability to make data available and uh, share data in general terms as part of their mandate, the, the new mandate that uh, comes with the, the information age and, and changes in society where the uh, access to data is uh, part of a, a society-wide expectation. This particular program, so uh, in order to do that baseline data management, we do have uh, ARDC uh, services and capabilities that I talked about in that first slide um, that can help in that just in the, the normal baseline activity of data sharing. This particular program is slightly different and it's a, um, uh, a focus on extending uh, public sector um, capacity to provide specific uh, research sector requirements, to respond to specific research sector requirements. So from a boring kind of accounting point of view, this is not shifting money from the research part of government to the operation, other operational parts of government uh, to do the normal data sharing. This is a specific uh, extra piece of work where um, research sector requirements require the public sector agencies to go to some uh, uh, extra step. And uh, we're considering that ex extra step is part of the national research infrastructure. And that's why we're co-investing in this program. Let's come to some of the background. I will now um, Pass over to uh, Shayda Hadavi, who's the program manager for this program, to go through some of the details. So, in the in this program, at a glance, the aim that we have is to extend or improve the public sector data to be able to support the leading edge research. We, for the participants, we encourage collaboration, but we need at least one research organization and one public sector to be involved in this project actively. And for the funding, ARDC will invest up to $350,000 per project. And we are estimating that the projects will start in the fourth quarter of this year, and they can be up to two and a half years. The expression of interest phase, which is open at this moment, is open until 29th of June, after which there would be a followed by a request for proposal phase, which is open from mid-August to mid-September. And the request for proposal phase is the competitive stage where we, there would be much more questions on the projects in mind. Next slide. So the activities that are scoped in this program are to implement data standards, to extend the existing collections within the public sector, or to develop interfaces to provide access to the data, to establish new governance policy or access arrangements to the data, or to connect the data set with research infrastructure, analytical tools, platforms, or other modeling environments. Next. So we have a few prerequisites. So as I said, we need to have at least one research organization involved. We need at least one public sector department or agency. And the public sector should already have the baseline data management and data availability. So we do not support generation of new data from the beginning if there is no data already in the public sector. And we do need formal support from both of the research organization and the public sector. However, if at the stage of the EUI, 
the formal support is not there, that's quite all right. And we have a bridging process that I will explain in the next slide, if you can pass. So in the bridging process, if you are a research organization or you are a public sector organization that has the data, but you do not have all the parties involved, you can use the contact us form on our web page contact us and say, I have this idea, but I do not have partners. We will get in touch with you and help you to find the correct partners for this project. You can alternatively even submit your idea using the UI form. And then in the UI form, you can there is a place where you can indicate that you don't have all the partners already for, formally support the project. If we have such an UI submission, we will again reach out to you and we will do our best to help you find the right partners. But by the time that you're submitting your proposal, we expect that you have found all the partners. So at the UI stage, we will be involved with you to help you find the right partners and we will be involved in bridging process. But by the request for proposal phase, if you still have not got the formal support from the research organization or the public sector, you cannot proceed. Next. So for the selection criteria, the aim basically has to be that you improve public sector data or its access management, that you would demonstrate the purpose for the proposed data asset by how it will enable new research, new insights or impact beyond research, that you would have identified the beneficiaries and we would prefer if you have them as project partners in advisory board, in committee or any several other roles that we will propose that you would have a plan to have this data asset as an ongoing national research infrastructure. And this year, we do not have a mandatory co-investment for our project, but the level of co-investment is still counted as one of the selection criteria in this program. Next. So I think we have covered all the details of the program. Adrian, I hand it back to you. Okay. Now we're coming towards the end of this. So if you ha do have any questions, uh, there is a question pod, I believe, on the in the controls there. If you'd like to just note any questions down, and uh, we'll get to those questions in just a few minutes. All right. Um, so now, kind of summing up as to what the objectives of this, you know, what, what we're doing here. Um, we're trying to make that bridge. This is a diagram that's been adapted from the uh, National Infrastructure Roadmap. Uh, what we're trying to do here is get that um, connection between the public public sector data and uh, the national research infrastructure. Um, we think by the combination of uh, public sector data with the research sector value add of modeling analysis tools, etc., that moving off towards the right, we can actually really create some very important sort of environmental, social, uh, economic uh, impacts. We should also uh, just underline that in this diagram between the public sector and the national research infrastructure, we're hoping that there's a quite a, an important self-interest for the public sector partners in that um, if we get uh, if we can make available through this program, I'll just take an example, uh, uh, information on the health system or the education system, and uh, that can be coupled up to uh, modeling environments from the research sector that we should be able to, that one of the key beneficiaries could should be the public sector organizations themselves with um, access, you know, public sector um, uh, Policy officers, for example, could be able to get access to this uh, national research infrastructure to do their own modeling and come up with um, better public policy. They could be um, having long term partnerships with research organizations on the basis of uh, the data and the, the value add research infrastructure so that the public sector organizations are getting benefiting from um, research sector analysis. Um, and in the end, we're getting better public policy. 
And of course, we want also economic and environmental and other social impacts, but I just underline that I think in the very first instance, there could be a very nice virtuous circle here that um, the public sector data is made available in a more specific way to the research sector. And then the research sector can provide uh, value add uh, specifically back to the public sector in terms of uh, better analysis and background for public policy. Um, so just to, to readdress there, um, sum up on the project program objectives. Um, we are coming at it from uh, a research sector point of view. Um, we think that one of the benefits here is that I'm sure public sector agencies get all sorts of people tapping them on the shoulder saying, um, we're interested in data. Uh, this process should be able to provide um, so for some priority requirements from a larger group of researchers in a more co coherent and coordinated way. Um, and the third point there, it will also give us a good two year period to work together in a, in a coordinated and aligned way to build up some you know, much, much more serious uh, uh, collaboration between the two sectors uh, other than what could be done by trying to coordinate uh, activities that just come from the normal administration of uh, public sector and the normal research. These are projects that will bring the two partners together in a much more formal way and allow a better long-term goals to be, um, to be uh, delivered. Um, and then again, as I said, the, the last thing we're actually hoping that uh, through this um, the synergy here that we will be able to uh, improve public policy administration and service delivery um, through that um, this, the leverage and symbiosis between the two sectors. So I think that's uh, all we want to say as far as in way of uh, background. I think the, the next part of the session is questions. So I believe we already have some questions there. What's going to happen is that Julia will read them out and then we'll answer those. So if there's anything on your mind, uh, go to the little control panel, find the, the question section and just uh, type your questions in there. Thanks, Julia, Adrian. What questions do we have there? The first question we have is, can current NCRIS facilities be the research partner? So yes, the increased facilities can count as the research partner together with universities, uh, publicly funded research organization and medical research institute, all four would count as research partners. Thanks, Shada. Um, next question it says, you said there are six related grant schemes. How do I know if this is the right scheme versus some of the others if I don't yet have a public sector partner? So if the question, so if you want to work with the data that exists in the public sector in creating a data asset, this might be the correct program for you. If you do not have the, the only problem to you, if you know the data exists, but you don't have the correct contact, you can reach us, reach, reach out to us and we will help you to find the correct partner. But if you, if your doubt is beyond this, not having the right contact, you can afterwards use the contact form to reach out to us and we will arrange for, for your meeting to give you an overview on other programs and we can invite the other uh, program managers to be also there. So you can explain the idea that you have in mind and we can guide you which might be the correct program for you. And there is a, a intentional overlap between uh, some of our programs, of course, um, and some of our other programs. Um, we are expecting public sector and research sector to be working together in you know, all sorts of different ways. Um, this program, we've allocated, uh, it's a portfolio approach. Uh, we've allocated particular programs to have particular focuses so that by the end of our, this whole and the, the whole data assets initiative, we will be sure that we've covered off a number of important areas. So that's why we've cordoned off this program here to make sure that by the end of all of this, uh, we will have improved the um, interaction between the public sector and research sector because we see that as a really strategic uh, priority. 
So in one sense, uh, this is a program where we've really restricted the eligibility and the criteria so that we really try and make a difference uh, in this area. Um, it, in all our other programs, of course, having public sector partners is um, is quite um, um, encouraged and, and really uh, you could use those other programs. If you have any doubts as to which program you should be in, then just contact somebody at ARDC and we'd be happy to, to listen to what your, your idea is and uh, give you some advice on which of those might be the best. Thanks, Adrian. Next question. Does the project have to result in nationally available data or can it be on the pathway there? So we do want a national data asset. This doesn't mean that data has to be openly available to, to everybody, but it does mean that there has to be correct licensing on who can access the data. So there has to be correct metadata nationally available, but that doesn't mean the data itself has to be openly available on a national level. But the, so we called a national data asset, a data asset that everybody would know how they can access the data and has correct metadata defined for it and respects all fair guidelines. Adrian, do you want to add to that? Yeah. And this is a, a nice example of the, the previous question. We actually have another program which is specifically called Emerging Collections. And that's again in its portfolio approach. We didn't want just the only the strongest collections just to get stronger and stronger by more and more investment. We actually have a pathway uh, there'll be a call in October this year for the emerging collections thing, and that's exactly for that kind of thing where you can see the potential, but you know the the work that needs to you know the output of the first project is to create the collaboration, create the governance, uh, uh, you know start the pathways and the pipelines for the data, but not necessarily um, you know have a uh, a mature data asset. In this program, uh, we don't have uh, any criteria that would um, that would uh, make it easy for a, a, a non-specific data asset to actually score well, because one of the you know the criteria are that people can access the data. So if it's, I think the words you used there were pathway. Um, it doesn't need to be uh, settled. Uh, at the time of your application, but by the time that the end of the project is there, we would definitely expect the data to be available. Uh, Shada said it doesn't need to be open, it needs to be fair, it needs to be accessible in, in an appropriate way. But in this project, in this program, we wouldn't accept uh, the end point of the project saying, okay, we're now, we've now established a pathway or a framework or something like that. We would want to see some actual data being made available by the end of this project. But if you think that your project is just a pathway project, then we have a, another program for those pathway projects. Thanks, Adrian. Next question. What expectation of funding balance is required between the public sector agency and the research organisations in terms of investment? So I don't think we have any limits on that. What we will look into is the sum of the total investment, basically, and that would count as one of the criteria. So the fact that which one of the organizations is investing does not affect our criteria. Next question. What is the view on leveraging between the data asset schemes and the platform schemes? So that's, so. Each of the programs so would be evaluated separately. So if you do have a program also for us in the bridging, the public sector bridging, and one in platforms, they would be evaluated separately and they will not affect each other. So, but we do encourage you to contact us if you are planning to do so. And there's no guarantee if your project requires both halves because they're competitive processes, we can't guarantee that both would get up or one would get up or any of them would get up. Um, yeah, so but, you would have to mention the dependencies if it exists, that if you don't get one, the other will not go ahead, sorry. Yeah. But in a general sense, uh, the data assets program is exactly what it's saying. It's, it's focusing on the, the content 
the actual quality of the data, the standards in the data, the governance over the data, the collaboration, the pipelines for the data, uh, ontologies, everything to do with the quality of the data asset itself, uh, as well as interfaces to um, analytical you know, platforms and, and software, et cetera. But the focus of these programs is really on the, on the data asset itself. The platforms project is complementary to that. It's focusing in on uh, an analytical uh, platform or a, a, an, an access platform that takes for granted the existence of data. So yes, the two programs are complementary in that sense. Next question, could the ABC count as a public sector partner, specifically in terms of access to existing news clips, et cetera? Great question, I say Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. We do have a list, uh, there's a specific list on the website of uh, public sector agencies. Um, I'd be happy to take this question offline to check whether it's on there and if not, uh, under what you know what definition of a public sector agency we're going off the the definitions that are on the um com what there's a commonwealth site that lists public sector organizations in australia next person asks that they um they have a specific question about an eoi using state and national data assets are they able to set up a phone conversation to discuss this definitely um, so you can use the contact us that is on the, at the bottom of the page of the public sector. If you can just drop your phone number or your email address, I will reach out to you to set up a call. Next question, when will the new program for emerging data assets open? So I think they are planning to have two calls. One would be October this year and the other would be October 2021. And the next question I think has been answered, how should we contact you? Yeah, so it's at the bottom of the contact us form. And that's all the questions we have just now. Does anybody have any others that they want to add to the pod? No, it looks like, oh, hang on. Here we go. Will the presentation be made available? So we are recording the whole call and I think the whole webinar will be available. So the, but if necessary, we can actually make the slides available as well. Yeah. All right, so it looks like we're coming to the end there. Um, Shada, what's the next, what's the next key date that uh, everyone needs to keep in mind? So we have at the end of the June, 29th of June, the end of the EOI process. Already at this stage, if you have any further questions or if you want help with finding the right contacts, do reach out to us and otherwise submit an EOI by the end of June, because if you have not submitted an EOI, you will not be able to submit a proposal at a later stage. So if you do submit a proposal without having the right contacts, you will still be eligible to submit a proposal. So, do submit a proposal by the end of June, and then we will reach out to you, and then the request for proposal phase will be open mid-August, so 14th of August, if I'm not mistaken, until mid-September, 17th of September, to be exact. Great. Well, thank you very much. I'll hand over to Julie to just wind up there. Um, thanks, Shada and Adrian. Um, as Shada mentioned, if you do have further questions, please either use the form um, and we will be putting our questions from today in our frequently asked questions. So thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Bye. Bye, -bye.